Hey, what's up, everybody? It's day three of the Mayhem event that GGG's putting on, the first of three events. They're doing Mayhem, Endless Delve, and then Delirium Everywhere. And uh, I've had a little bit of separation, <laughs> a little bit of time to digest my death, and some time to really think about this event, what's going on here. And I just want to add a little additional context from the rest of the community as well. So we'll be going over some of the stuff that people have been saying. So I was going to make this video yesterday after I died but I needed some time away from that. Just a few hours ago, Zizarin put out a short three minute video that really says much of what I wanted to say, but I just wanted to add a little bit additional onto that. So definitely check his video out. It's really, really good. Uh, you know, the short of it is that Mayhem's supposed to be like a really fun event. That's actually what it's been in the past. And I think it's like particularly marred by two critical flaws right now. And Ziz touches very much on one of them, which is the fact that they added a bunch of mods. You know, Mayhem is supposed to be this really fun thing where you go into a zone, there's 20 Harbies, there's 20 invasion bosses, whatever. It's crazy it shit happened. primarily should be giving you more monster density and more loot. And not really scaling the difficulty too much besides, hey, there's a bunch of stuff on the screen at the time. But not really turning it into this like really scary spiky damage. And unfortunately, with the additional modifiers here, they're basically like baby gauntlet mods. Uh, there's a couple that are pretty scary. Things like Fizz as Chaos, and plus two additional proj, you know, combined on that's rogue insane. exiles or anything like that could be particularly scary. And that's primarily- Yeah, two additional projectiles. You ever gone into one of those fucking, uh, th those like ice, those like ice guys that shoot the icicles at you and now there's three and the first one takes you to 36% chill and the second one freezes you and then you just die? Oh, fuck that. That's so annoying. Oh my God. Yeah, Veritania mobs, or or also the Exiles, right? I mean, the ones that shoot, like, the uh, fucking those chaos abilities do so much damage. The porcupines? Yeah, the porcupines are fucking annoying, too. They've always been annoying. What Zizarin talks about in his video, but what I want to talk about, because what killed me specifically, personally, was uh, Arch Nemesis mods. I think in events like this, when there are... Well, it seems like they're repeating the same mistake that they made with Arch Nemesis is that the problem with Arc Nemesis mods is that they multiplied against each other and then they got to a point where they just did so much damage it would one-shot players. Or, uh, conversely, the mobs would just take no damage. Additional difficulty factors, the scary effects of Arch Nemesis modifiers are dramatically amplified. In the regular game, Arch Nemesis mods are not fun. <laughs> you know, they're not the most comfortable thing in the game until you're like totally scaled up. If you're just playing regular... I, I will say that I think that the Arc Nemesis modifiers are better than the base modifiers. I think that the rare mobs in Path of Exile were completely pointless, super boring. They were just... You didn't even know what the mods were. I, I am actually an advocate of Arc Nemesis, but I'm not an advocate of badly balanced Arc Nemesis. Like, I feel like the mods at a base level are fundamentally much better than what we had before then. Trade or regular SSF, They're just not balanced, you know, particularly right. not in hardcore, it's not a big deal. You know, when you're trying to get your character online in a race, especially like a 10 day or shorter event, Arch Nemesis mods, specifically when you first get to maps, can be incredibly scary and yeah. feel awful. And uh, let's take a me. very quick look at my rip right here. This with the bats, I saw this a couple days ago. Maybe one day ago. Yeah. So if you go through... So, uh, since it's Path of Exile, we're gonna go frame by frame here. Um, you can see... Oh, where is it? You really have to go down to the very, very specific. So you see, obviously they're touched and they're able to, uh, you know, that's obviously, you see him, he goes down, oh no, no, yeah, he already enchanted them. So they had a bunch of different buffs on him. He's got a bunch of shit on him. He goes down there and then this right here again, slows down your action speed so you can't move quite as fast. And then each different frame, so he gets hit again. And I think he's gonna get elemental weakness here pretty soon. And, oh no, actually he dies. Wait, no, not quite yet. There it is. Now, okay, there we go. So he died so fast that he has the death up and he still has 300 life left. And you see, obviously, vulnerability and elemental weakness up. 
So this is a, uh, a bad time for him. But to be fair, he only had vulnerability and elemental weakness at the very end. So, <laughs> uh, if you want a deeper analysis of that, of what goes on there, uh, definitely check out the video that I put out earlier today on the Clips channel. Subscribe to that if you want more, uh, you know, more fun clips. I can tell if there's going to be a death clip or not in Path of Exile, because if the combat lasts for more than one second, it's going to be a death clip. Some more shorter, uh, shorter format stuff. But yeah, basically the reason why I died is I had positive chaos res. When I hit maps, it was a tier two map. The arch nemesis mods just stacked in a way that made me take a ridiculous amount of chaos res. I got really, really unlucky with the chaos degen arch nemesis mod plus the entangling vines arch nemesis mod, yep. both which do chaos damage over time. And on top of that, the entangling vines blocked my shield charge from being able to shield charge, even having positive chaos res. Uh, when I hit maps and 3,500 life, apparently that wasn't enough to stop me from dying. And yeah, that was the end of my character. Previously, wow. the entire concept of mayhem was, and you know, this is what Ziz says in his video, is it is for blasting for really, really high, you know, density of monsters. Honestly, through the acts, it was incredibly fun. Walking into a zone, seeing 10 harbingers, especially in act one, took a while to farm them. But being able to get multiple binding orbs by the time that you hit mud flats, being able to elk and have full rare gear, you know, before you hit Mervale was pretty cool. You know, killing some rogue exiles, getting, you know, full sets of jewelry and everything. Really, really good. Helps that progression feel really fun through the axe. Yeah, and it's generally what you would hope for is to keep that accelerated progression when you hit to maps. Right. But unfortunately... With these mods, like the difficulty really spikes after that. The confluence of Arch Nemesis plus the additional mods, you can get really unlucky. It makes it so even if you're playing in like SSF softcore, it's going to feel particularly uncomfortable. Many of the hardcore of hardcore players are very turned off at this. And uh, yeah, let's just see what the rest of the community has to say. Here we go. So first up, we have this post from Jung Roan showing Hu Wu's rip when he was at rank one. We can watch this real quick. This rip is really, really unfortunate. It's a combination of not having shock immunity getting cursed from with conductivity, but then getting absolutely blasted from a overtuned beyond Scourge monster. Uh, just absolutely blasting Scourge him, so. is a lot of damage. Yeah, just like that. And so if you look right here, you can see him. He's charging. And then he's dead. Got him. Uh, just absolutely blasting him. So, and this is how fast it happens. And yeah. you can see also the tree here. The tree does not obscure it, but it makes it harder to easily see. Just like that, right before he takes the hit, he has connectivity on him, and when yep. he takes the hit, he has a forty percent shock. You could argue that he could go for a little bit more defenses there. But, I mean, he was ranked number one. Obviously, he's really good at what he does. It's Huwu. You know, when a white monster hits that hard, that is pretty rough. You know, even with a 40% increased damage taken. Uh, that's pretty brutal. I don't even think this has anything to do with Mayhem, the mods, or Arch Nemesis. This is that's just, just the game. you know, the new Scourge monsters yeah. are that much scarier. Uh, here was a funny little post of someone showing themselves fighting a triple tormented uh, Hillock on the, uh, on the Twilight Strand here. This is just a funny unfortunate thing that can happen this you know kind of sucks honestly like if you logged in one hour late i believe it was tormented yeah. uh after the first rotation in mayhem and yeah if you logged in just one hour late you were basically like hard stuck there um or you know if you were in softcore you could kind of death run it and yeah that could just set you back by 10 20 30 minutes pretty easily there i think this kind of speaks to how they've adjusted delirium everywhere or how we hope them to get adjusted is that it's a scaling difficulty and something like this i would argue if you want to do this properly in the future to make it an actually fair race you'd probably want some sort of scaling difficulty so act one you know maybe isn't fully random off the bat you know allows you to scale your character a little bit so if you log in just 60 minutes late you're not like an, an additional hour behind right and then i just wanted to end on this thread which i think is the most indicative of really how the community is feeling in general. You know, Ventura, who is a very, you know, a known SSF player, he's, he's very good at the game, says adding mods to Mayhem might possibly be the least enjoyable experience I've ever had in PoE. 
I don't know if I'm going to log back in tomorrow. Whose idea even was this? And then Ty Ty Killer. I feel like this is just something that people have been saying even about the Lake Calandra. Like ever since they added the Arc Nemesis mods, and it's like, I, I feel like P Path of Exile has tried harder every single league to find more different fucking abstract combinations of things that they can throw together to fucking kill you. Uh, I, I, I don't like that in the game. I feel like the problem in the game is that a lot of the abilities happen so fast that people aren't going to be able to react to it. And a lot of the builds that people use in hardcore are just so tanky that they can survive pretty much any of the hits. It's just like, it, it, I don't, I don't find that to be like super fun. Normally mayhem is my favorite race, but I'm log logging out on day two, crouching tuna. I logged out in act three, Ben, he's pretty good at the game. This is why I yep. skipped logging in altogether. But yeah, I mean, Ventura is usually a very positive guy, really, you know, yeah, he pushes I think people are kind of tired and path of exile of just being constantly fucked in the ass with like some new ability or some new thing that kills them really fast without even a second to react to it. And it's like, I also think that, uh, I think this happens to softcore players too. I don't think this is just a hardcore issue because in softcore you lose your maps, right? So like if you die so many times, you're, you're not able to zone into the same map. I think this works very well with like bosses. So it's like, you can't just death march Sirius for four hours and then finally kill him. But at the same time, uh, you know, for, for maps, it kind of sucks for new people that they're trying to fight, you know, monsters. And then there's also, of course, the obvious big thing is that you lose experience. And it's like whenever you lose a lot of experience because some freak thing happens that you can barely react to and then your character's instantly removed from the game and you lose 10% of your experience for it, this is just simply not going to be a fun experience for a lot of people. Yeah, it kills your fun. Yeah, it makes you realize that, like, yeah, the game just wasted your time because of some bullshit. This through some really difficult stuff. Mayhem does not feel as hard as Gauntlet, right? It, it is not as hard as the hardest Gauntlets. But the problem is it's about expectations. This is just not what we expected going into this event. I think everyone just thought it would be like the previous Mayhem events where it's just blasting and having a good time and uh you know tons of loot raining you know looking for those harbinger spawns and farming them when it rotates on your favorite map and trying to get tons of xp tons of currency whatever and just having a good time for some reason they wanted to add additional mods and give people a baby gauntlet which you know if they renamed it like baby gauntlet or something and maybe had some additional rewards i didn't even mention that there's only the god killers reward this league and it's only for the top person in hardcore cell cell phone per ascendancy and then i think there's just like four for the top That's software crazy. players something like that many many fewer rewards to the point where like for me when i was looking at the standings the the number one raider was like level 92 when i woke up on saturday and i was like level 70 and i was like I don't even want to like try to push through because I can't even go for like second or third place. If this one guy stays that far ahead of me, then I just can never win. Right. But you know, if I could at least be with the pack, you know, top three or top five, like they've had in the past, I think that's a lot more engaging and, and interesting from a competitive standpoint. Anyway. Um, you know, I don't need to be first place. I'm, I'm happy with, you know, second or third and, and at least saying that I did pretty well, but yeah, that's it for me. That's the, uh, that's my thoughts on that. It's, it's about expectations not being set properly. And I think that something like Arch Nemesis still being in the game, in addition to these mods, rogue exiles, invasion bosses, etc. It just compounds the difficulty. We're just looking. Well, they, they, it's like in WoW. We're, we're like, remember back in Legion where you would use like three trinkets, two cooldowns, and you'd get like an external buff and you had heroism and you used a potion and like your character was doing god damage for like eight seconds? Well, imagine if the monsters have that on you. That's what happens in Path of Exile is that there's like some monster where there's some weird fucking combination of abilities and it's either unkillable or it is just unsurvivable, where it will just one-shot you randomly. And not being transparent in the Classic this year, I think that they just need to try to tone down the amount of, like, random one-shots and random abilities that have, like, these massive scalers on them. Uh, I think that's really what the issue is. It's like, for example, uh, you know, I, I think a, a really good example of just, like, a shit ability is, like, Cirrus can cast the die beam on you when he's not even on your screen. This is stupid.
Like this, this is stupid. Like, and whenever you're running back to him, so like you've already died and now you're running back and you get killed running back. This is, this is stupid. Like, why, why, why is it like this? Why, why is this possible? And uh, I, I don't understand why this is a positive thing. Reflect physical is still kind of annoying. Yeah, I think so too. Punishment for dying and serious, to be honest. I mean, it's not as hard as it used to be. I'll certainly say that. The problem with PoE is they save solutions for PoE 2 and don't ship to exist to PoE. I feel like they tried to solve Lake of Calandra in a lot of ways, and I think they improved it in a big way. Uh, it was a lot better than whenever it first came out. But I think the issue is like very fundamental, that there is just so much ability and item and debuff bloat and things that are occurring at the same time that interact with each other in different ways that it's almost impossible. Like you see these people that play the game for uh, a, a job and they're still getting one shot and they have to watch frame by frame to see what they did wrong. Uh, this is not sustainable. This is not something that like, if, if they're having a problem with it, what are casual players feeling? Visual pollution is still a thing. Yeah, exactly. It's gotten a lot better though. From like 100 to zero deaths in less than a second in a lot of situations. You know, when many of the best players in the game either don't want to log in, they're not having fun. That usually is like a leading indicator for the rest of the community as well, which yeah, is a shame. Definitely. I really wanted to be positive like and canaries. love this event. Um, and I think it does offer a lot. Like I said, if you are in softcore, especially, I think leveling through the axe was actually really, really fun and interesting. If you want to give that a go, you know, don't let me turn you off from that. Having all four links and rares by the end of act one was really fun. And it made it a really engaging, interesting experience. But yeah, once they got to Act 9, 10, and then early maps, the spiky damage just became really, really uncomfortable. And yeah, it just turned me off. I'm not even going to make another character. But anyway, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm really curious to hear your guys' experience with the Mayhem if you're playing it. If you're playing any of the other ones, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for next Monday. Endless Delve is one of my favorite events. I am 100% going to be trying really hard in that. But after dying to Arch Nemesis yesterday, I might not make more than one character if I die. I'll just say that. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, I mean, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye. I, I feel like that's happened with a lot of people. It's not the way the casuals leave the game as quick as possible. You can't be casual in PoE. Try to play the game without any outside help and have fun. Well, like, here's the thing. This is something that I, I wish that they would do. I wish they would just make it to where you can respec your character as many times as you want with no regret orbs before you finish the campaign. I think that it serves no purpose in the game to lock new players and people beginning their character into a build that they can't redo because like how many of you guys for example you made a build and then you get to act seven like where are the reality checks uh dominus mervale if you're like really fucking up um katava i don't think katava is that hard if you're good mechanically though um, I would say that, like, one of the biggest ones, Groost? Eh, I don't think so. Malachi? I don't think Malachi's a reality check. Uh, I feel like, uh, like, Tukohama and, and, like, that area, that's, like, one of the first areas whenever I'm playing in Act 6. Because, like, if you don't have your resist capped, if you're not ready for that, that shit's hard. Yeah, Act 6 is a big, yeah, is a resist and defense check. Yeah, it's huge, man. And uh, even, like, that guy after him, the, the I forgot the one where, like, you go down the valley and then there's, like, the guys jumping down, the fire and everything. Uh, I, I forgot his fucking name. I'd recognize it if I saw it, though. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, Duresso, no, not, Dur I don't think Duresso, Aberath. Yeah, Aberath, there you go. And uh, anyway it's just it, it, it's an, it's insane right that you can't respect your character you can't undo that and i think what it causes people to do is it either causes them to quit the game or it causes them to play the game in a way that they just look at a guide and they follow the guide on how to exactly play the game and i think the ownership of the game whenever you do that and your ownership of your character does go down my best advice whenever a person plays the game in path of exile i tell them Follow a fucking guide. 
follow a guide always let somebody let somebody do the work for you let somebody do the thinking for you you will appreciate it in the long run follow a meta build and I, I think that like for me i remember back whenever i played poe back in like 2012 in the closed beta and and i got to pretty much like almost that like merciless which like back then was like the hardest version of the campaign uh whenever i got there and they didn't even have the map system in the game at that point it was like again closed beta so maybe they did i don't remember anyway uh i i i couldn't undo my character i couldn't change anything i couldn't do anything i was just stuck like i i just i had to redo my character i couldn't get the orbs that i wanted i was fucked so yeah i mean i think that you should be able to respec with literally no restriction whatsoever until you finish the epilogue like until you get into maps you should be able to respec however much you want i don't see any negative in that at all mm. so don't want to search out information to beat the goddamn story well i i think that that's true but like poe doesn't have that once you open first map i think you should i think uh it should be whenever it's turned off. Yeah, that's fine, right? Whenever you open your first map or something like that. Yeah, like, a, you know, you're now going into another realm and you can't respec again or your talents the way you want them to be. Yeah, any, like, I mean, like, we're, we're really all talking about the same thing, basically. And, 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 like, a lot of these things should just make the game better for new players without harming anything seriously. Because any new player isn't going to go onto the trading website and start trading, you know what I mean? They're just going to stop playing the game. I, I, I don't I don't see this as a positive. So I feel like RF has been so successful because the guide holds your hand through everything on top of being hella easy to play. Yeah, Righteous Fire is easy to play. Uh, Pox does a great job on giving everybody, you know, all the information they need for it. And just in general, it's very chill. That's definitely true. I mean, make a simpler version for casuals. I hope in PoE 2 there is substantially less visual clutter, there are more meaningful and impactful rare mobs. I think that Arc Nemesis does that, but the problem is that again, Arc Nemesis mods are fine. Arc Nemesis Legion rares? Oh fuck! Arc Nemesis Delirium rares? Oh my god! Arc Nemesis uh, Scourge rares? Fuck! We're dead, and so that's what our Arc Nemesis. Oh, even better, Arc Nemesis uh, Essence Monsters. Yeah, there you go, seven essences. Oh my God, you're dead. So that's where the problem comes in. That's that's where the issue is. It's the multipliers, man. That's what the issue I I think is mostly corrupted. Yeah, and he's corrupted exactly. Essences were fuck the league start. Yeah, I remember that. I, uh, I just really hope they can get this under control. I love Path of Exile. As I said, I supported Path of Exile whenever it was in closed beta. I'm super excited for PoE 2. I play most leagues, I would say. I would say I probably play 60% of leagues whenever I, I have time and it's not interfering with anything. Uh, this league, I played a uh, Shock Inquisitor. And it was pretty fun. I uh, got into red maps, didn't finish enough, but then I started playing Tower of Fantasy. And uh, I got into that because that was the new MMO, and I felt like oh, I had to play that. But yeah, any thoughts on Throne Liberty? Oh, I'm very excited for that. Very, very excited for that. So, yeah, I mean, I think this league, and I think this is this this right here is really just a. Um, it's just really just a smaller version of how people have been feeling about the entire game. I really hope Poe can get it back together and have the next league be fun. That's what I think. Cost is relevant though. Verification adds a value. I can afford it. Average Andy need verification. If... Wait, what the fuck? Oh, that's from like um, weeks ago, like hours ago. Holy fuck. Uh, yeah, who cares? Mainstream schedule. We're getting pretty close to that, man. Like, if I can't get this shit under control in like a couple of days, I think I'm just going to reset my schedule because it's just gotten ridiculous. It's gotten so fucking ridiculous. Talking about Twitter. Yeah, hardcore with each league is becoming more and more unplayable. I think they don't want to delete it since uh, they not do anything to balance it for hardcore players, but they're adding ruthless game mode. This is so stupid. I don't understand why they're doing that either. What do you mean it's great? Yeah, true. 
Um, I don't understand why they're doing it either. I think that, like, grinding your games has, like, this, like, fucking massive hard-on fixation for making things super hard for no reason. Like, they focus way too much on making the game hard. And, and like, having different things to, like, kill your character. It's very annoying. Chris's vision. Yeah, true. They're obsessed with the Diablo 2 game gameplay loop. I don't know about the Diablo 2 gameplay loop. I can't really speak to that. But just overall, I'm not a fan. I've got to do one more thing, then I'm going to go to bed. Okay, guys?